Hi friends, it's Andrew Goodall here once again from Nature's Image Photography with some more information on the Panasonic Lumix G9. Before we get started, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have new content about the G9 on the way and this is absolutely the best way to keep in touch. This video is all about ISO, specifically how to change the ISO options in the G9. It's in response to two questions raised by my subscribers on a butterfly video I uploaded recently. I'm going to answer them one at a time so make sure you watch right to the end to get all the info. So here's the first question. Alexander asked, how did you set the ISO to 320? On my G9 I only see 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600 etc. Well in a moment I'm going to show you but first I want to explain why I think it's important. What I'm not going to do in this video is try to explain what ISO is from the beginning. In fact, I'm assuming that if you're looking to extend your ISO options, you already have a rough idea of what ISO is all about. So you should already know that increasing the ISO allows you to shoot at faster shutter speeds, but the trade-off is poorer image quality, as the high ISO creates what we call a noisier image. One of the criticisms some people like to make about the Micro Four Thirds cameras is that they tend to create more noise than cameras with larger sensors, especially at high ISO. So most of the time we like to shoot at low ISO whenever possible. Now by default the ISO settings on the G9 go up in full EV or exposure value stops. That is they go from 200 to 400 to 800 and so on. Just the way things were back in the days of film. At 200 your images are virtually noise free. By the time you get to 3200 noise becomes quite noticeable. And I don't ever shoot at any setting higher than 3200 because the image quality really deteriorates. And that's not just on the G9, I don't think I've ever shot above 3200 ISO on any camera, whether it be Micro Four Thirds, Crop Sensor or Full Frame. Now if 200 ISO is noise free and we're going to accept that 3200 ISO is noisy, that means we really only have a few short steps to work with in between. The good news is that you can change these steps to represent one third EV stops, meaning you can increase your ISO in much smaller increments. Now instead of going from 200 to 400, you can also choose 250 and 320, and those smaller steps continue right along the ISO scale. So what's the importance of this? Well, if you're shooting at 200 ISO and you need just a little bit more exposure, why go all the way up to 400 when you could just go to 250? And when things are getting a little bit more noisy at 1600, why go all the way to 3200 when you could just go to 2000? Having these smaller increments just makes sense, especially if you're a photographer who's worried about noise in your images. So that's the reason, now here's the process. First up, this is how your G9 is set up for ISO by default. If you press the ISO button on top of the camera and scroll through, you can see it goes from 200 to 400 to 800 and so on. Now to change this, first get into the menu. All of what I'm showing you can be done using the touch screen, the joystick or the arrow wheel. I'm using the arrow wheel here. Go down to the third section of the menu and then up to the exposure heading. The very first item on the screen will be called ISO increments. Click that and if one EV is highlighted simply go up to select one third EV and then click set. When you get out of the menu, hold down the ISO button again. Now you can see all the same ISO settings you had before, but you're also able to access the one third stops in between as well. So that's the first question sorted, now on to the second. In that same discussion thread, Joe said, if you see 100, you have extended ISO on, which is unnecessary in my opinion. Well first I'm going to show you how you can extend your ISO range, and then I'm going to explain why you might want to. Then you can decide for yourself if you think it's unnecessary. You can see that by default your ISO range starts at 200. So now we go back into the same part of the menu and below ISO increments there's a heading for extended ISO. If that's off, you can simply go in and switch it on. When you leave the menu and press the ISO button, you'll now find that you can go past 200 ISO and all the way down to 100, with a couple of steps in between if you've already changed your ISO increments. So that part is easy. Now for my argument for why extended ISO can be handy. In the same way that higher ISO allows you to get to faster shutter speeds, lower ISO lets you get to slower shutter speeds. 
Recently I did a video about the G9 image stabilizer and I specifically wanted to take some slow shutter speed movement effects handheld. I wasn't using an ND filter and at 200 ISO with my aperture closed right down, the slowest shutter speed I could get to was a 40th of a second. Now that's slow enough to look like a mistake, but not slow enough to look like an effect if you know what I mean. But by putting my ISO down to 100, I was able to take these shots at a 20th of a second. And that's my reason for enabling extended ISO on my camera. It won't make a lot of difference to image quality, and to be honest, I don't really expect to take advantage of it very often. But it does allow me to reach slower shutter speeds when I need to. As a manual photographer, I like to have maximum control over my exposure. By limiting my ISO options, I also put extra limits on what I can do with shutter speed and aperture. To me, maximizing my range of ISO options is the way to go. And if you agree, well, now you know how. I'm Andrew Goodall from Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe before you go.